Assalamu alaikum lovelies! Welcome back to my channel. April has come to an end so it is time once again for my favourites video. This month I thought that I would share with you my beauty and fashion favourites and then at the end of the video I thought that I would try something different. Let me know what you think about this. In my last video I asked whether you guys wanted me to share books and things like that as part of my monthly favourites. Quite a number of you said that you did so I thought what I would try is to read an excerpt from one of the books that I'm reading. So stick around to the end for that. For now, I'm going to begin with my beauty favourites. Numero 1. This is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. I did a swap with a gorgeous YouTuber, lovely girl called Nabella, and she sent me a massive box full of goodies from the USA, some American makeup. One of the things that I received was this palette. Now this is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Highlight and Contour Palette. These are incredibly popular at the moment, and by these I mean the whole contour highlight palette sets that are going around. They are everywhere and in loads of different forms. I have been making so much use out of, in particular, these two powders at the top there. This one is Lucid, the slightly peachy toned one, and the yellowy one is called Lyric. You know, this favourites review wouldn't be complete if I didn't compare this to the Anastasio palette because you guys know, I'm sure you're very well aware of how much I rave about that palette, how much I love it, but I've actually been reaching for this more often than my Anastasia palette. Now, I do like the darker contour colours too, but they don't form part of this shout out for this monthly favourites video. It's more so the lighter ones. I actually also like this neutral one, which is called Levitation. Lucid, which is a peachier toned powder, makes for a brilliant corrector. Yes, I have found powders in the past that worked well to correct under the eyes, but they've never been quite as creamy and smooth as this one here. And this powder is also so incredibly pigmented. I've actually found this entire palette more pigmented than my Anastasia palette. I know it's going to become a bit of a comparison here, but you know, I have told you guys how much I love that palette in the past, so I think it is worth mentioning how this one differs to that. So these are creamier, they're a lot more pigmented. You only need a very tiny amount. Literally, I just touch the top of the palette powder with a small fluffy brush and then just run that under my eyes. If I'm wearing a lighter coverage concealer, this powder, because it has peachy undertones, will sort of make up for any of the coverage that that concealer is lacking in the way of neutralizing. So if there's any excess darkness under the eyes after having concealed, then this powder here just sort of finishes the job in a really lovely, smooth, subtle way. I then turn to Lyric and use that to highlight under the eyes and also the tops of the cheekbones. It's what I've used today, by the way, as well, in today's makeup look. I've reached for this more than my banana powder from the Anastasia palette because Lucid is lighter than the Anastasia banana and also it's more pigmented. I think that is enough of a rave about this palette. You get it, it's one of my favorites for this month. Moving on, this is the Charlotte Tilbury The Retoucher Concealer. I actually purchased this ages ago, when Charlotte Tilbury first opened her counter in Selfridges in London, over a year ago, was it like two years ago? That's when I bought this. And then I entered my phase of very high coverage concealers and this sort of got forgotten. I rediscovered it this month, that's right. I was organizing my makeup, came across this, and I was like, why do I not use this very often anymore? If we're stepping out and I wanna just quickly conceal under the eyes, this is so easy to use. I just dab it under the eyes, blend out with my fingers. I don't even set it with a powder. It's very natural looking, sinks into the skin beautifully. It doesn't fully cover the dark circle. It doesn't claim to either but I kind of like that because it means that I can wear nothing on the rest of my face and it won't be like I've got stripes of concealers under my eyes and nothing on on the rest of my face. You know what I mean? It doesn't look stark, it doesn't look too bright under the eyes, it just looks like I haven't got anything on, but it conceals really well. My next favorite is the Kiko Precision Lip Pencil in the shade 302. It's the one that I'm wearing today. These sorts of tones of pencils, the sort of warmer brown, slightly orange toned, deep, whether they be burgundies, brown, Browns, reds or peachy tones they are so flattering if you have an olive skin tone they really are and they are so easy to style any kind of warm toned look will suit this kind of lip pencil absolutely love it it's so smooth so soft a lot softer and smoother than a lot of the uh, high-end lip pencils I think you guys know what I mean try it if you're a Kiko lover, then you will know what I mean. Specifically, it's a precision lip pencil because I know that they do another one. I believe it's the Smart Lip Pencil. Precision are softer and this shade is 
gorgeous. Okay, moving on, I'm going to do my fashion favorite. Now, in my last haul video that I did for you guys, thank you so much, by the way, for those of you who showed support on that, I will definitely be doing more. I think in that video, I mentioned to you guys that I'd made another order at Boohoo because I was so impressed with their clothing. Well, that order did come and I was very happy with it. One of the things that I got from it has made it into my monthly favorites video. They are a pair of black jeans in the shape of chinos they are i believe called mum trousers i'll link them anyway in the description box under this video as i will do for as much of the stuff or as much as i can manage for the things that i'm showing you today i would say they're a very relaxed fit type of chinos or a very how do you call it very flattering type of style especially if you're somebody who you know likes to go for slightly looser jeans or if you're a mum and you know, your body changes after kids. Yay for Boohoo and the fact that they have made a lot, actually, of very flattering chino style trousers. This happens to be one of them. Actually, the top that I'm wearing, I just realized, coincidentally, was also from that day. My final fashion favorite for this video is actually one of my hand daisy chains. I have been itching to share with you guys my new designs. I've been wearing them, actually, rather quite shamelessly throughout this entire month. Uh, they haven't been released. Actually, they might be released now on the website by the time this video goes up but this is my favorite hand daisy chain from the entire range I love this because I am so in love with the color of the pendant it's a mauvey brown color when I first had it dyed because of course I designed them all they're all custom made I fell in love with the pendant immediately the chain itself was originally gold but then I wanted to change it to a more rusty color and then put pearls around it it gives it kind of an antique -y look that I absolutely adore Door. Now it is time for me to move on to my book. So this is called Rumi's Tales from the Silk Road. It's by an author called Kamla K. Kapoor. Kamla actually belongs to the Sikh faith and of course Rumi's writings attract people of all kinds of backgrounds so it's not surprising that she was deeply moved by his tales, by his poetry, by his incredible insight to then go and write a book which is so easy to read. I read this out to my kids as well or some of the stories and it's so easy to digest. It's really not taxing at all for even young people or young kids to understand. And for me, it's just a joy because she writes in a very simplistic way, yet still manages to maintain the depth and the philosophical nature of Rumi's writings. It's not easy to do. Sometimes you think that, you know, the long and the complex things are the most difficult to do, but oftentimes simplifying something yet still remaining true to its original content or the core of the message can be very challenging. Anywho, so you should get this book. I received this book by a gorgeous, beautiful viewer called Sylvie. She gave this to me at one of the meetups that we had in Singapore last year. Are you ready? Make yourself comfy. This is literally just going to be me reading out a story. This is called The Gift. Mark hadn't seen Joseph, a childhood friend from Canaan, for many, many years. They had played together, grazed sheep together, and lain under the stars and shared their dreams together. Mark had loved Joseph deeply, though his mind often got in the way of his devotion. Mark had questioned Joseph's faith in a divine plan for the universe and for humans and doubted his friend's simple and grand convictions. See this coat of many colours, Joseph had once said to him as they lay in the shade of a tree. It is thus with our experiences, Mark. The light and dark colours blend into and emerge out of each other seamlessly. You cannot remove one pattern or colour without destroying the whole. Mark had sought out Joseph whenever he could, for in his company and presence, the universe, which he often thought to be a malignant force, became beneficent and kind, and the face of his friend made his soul dance. Then one day, Joseph suddenly disappeared, and it was rumoured that a wild animal had killed him as he and his brothers had gone to feed their father's flock of sheep. Joseph's brothers had brought back his blood-stained coat of many colours as evidence of his death. Stunned and sorrowful, Mark had mourned his friend for a long time. His mourning, however, was coloured with many doubts. He'd been familiar with Joseph's brothers' jealousy of their younger sibling. Mark felt certain that his brothers had done Joseph harm. Embittered, Mark roamed the world aimlessly, travelling from one place to another, but wherever he went, he could not escape from the prison of his beliefs. He deeply doubted that a universe that destroyed a person as noble as Joseph at such a young age could have any pattern or meaning. 
Then one day while he was in Turkey, a traveller from Egypt told Mark that Joseph, son of Jacob from Canaan, was alive. And not only alive, but was governor of all of Egypt. Mark's heart had somersaulted madly at the news, and as he heard the tale from the traveller, flares of hope, like the light of stars in the black cloth of night, flickered and danced in his soul. Was it possible? Dare he hope to see his friend again? And, oh joy, could Joseph's vision of the universe still be the right one, after all? As the days passed, Mark became more and more hopeful of meeting with his beloved friend. One day, in the bazaars of Turkey, he saw a shop full of beautiful things and recalled a time when, as youths, they had been sitting on boulders by a stream and Joseph had been talking about the necessity of keeping faith in the promise of being God's guest someday, of dining with him in his bounty. If you do not have faith, Joseph had said, then from his kitchen you will get only dust and ashes. So prepare, prepare, prepare for the meeting, my friend. Joseph had said, with eyes burning with passion. And how should one prepare? Mark had asked, perplexed at Joseph's meaning. Sleep and eat little. Stare a little, like the embryo, so you may be given the senses that behold the light of the unseen world. And when you emerge from this womb-like earth into the vast expanse into which the saints have entered, and go to the court of the friend, go not empty-handed, but take the gift of this stirring. Mark had not understood Joseph, who often spoke, it seemed to him, in obscure riddles. But the memory reminded Mark to buy a gift for his friend, who he was now hopeful of meeting. He spent a long time searching for the right gift, knowing that whatever he bought for Joseph would be paltry for the governor of Egypt. After much thought and many deliberations, Mark bought a gift with his savings. Turning toward Egypt, his heart soared on the crests of hope and plunged into the troughs of despair. Would Joseph even remember him? But when he finally reached Joseph's door, it opened immediately, and there, instead of a servant, as Mark had expected, stood Joseph himself, his arms wide open. Mark walked into them and sobbed, while Joseph held him near his heart. Later, Mark fed from Joseph's table, laden with an abundance of fruit and other food. Afterwards, they lay upon cushions and reminisced about the old days. Joseph told Mark his story, how, in their jealousy of him, his brothers had stripped him of his coat and thrown him into a well, how they had later taken him out and sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites who sold him to Potiphar? Sorry, not quite sure how to pronounce that. He told how Potiphar had made him the head of his household and how later he was sent to prison because Potiphar's wife had falsely accused Joseph of trying to seduce her. He explained how his skill of interpreting dreams had released him and he had gone to Pharaoh's court and was made governor of all the lands, how a famine in Canaan had brought his brothers to Egypt for corn, how they had met and how Joseph had forgiven them. Forgiven them? Mark, who had been seething with rage at Joseph's brothers, leapt up from the cushion and said, How could you forgive them? They threw you into a well. You could have died in it. How could you forgive those who threw you into the furnace of suffering? Like the moon, when she is waning, she knows she will be full again. I don't understand, Mark broke out. You could have been buried alive in the bowels of the earth. And it was because of them that you ended up in prison. When a seed of corn is buried in the earth, Mark, my friend, said Joseph, putting his arm around Mark's shoulders, it rises up as an ear of corn. When the corn is crushed in the mill, its value increases and it becomes bread. When the bread is crushed under our teeth, it becomes the mind and spirit. When does anything ever decrease by suffering and dying? A moat of understanding glimmered in Mark's mind. He wanted to bow down before Joseph and kiss his feet, but held himself back. His love for his friend left no room for doubt. Joseph knew how to make affliction yield fruit and was far, far above Mark's own spiritual state. The way for him to live now was in the reflection of his friend and try in whatever way he could to emulate his ways. But how? Did he have it in him, or was he doomed forever to flounder on the way? God, said Joseph, divining Mark's thoughts, causes all to happen. There was a long pause. Then Joseph said, now Mark, tell me, what gift have you brought for me? 
I couldn't think of anything worthy enough of you. How could I bring a grain of gold to a mine? How could I bring a drop of water to the sea? But come, come, show me what you brought. I couldn't bring anything that you don't already have, and let me see it, Joseph said, playfully reaching into Mark's bag, while the latter shamefully held on to it. After a joyful tussle, Joseph gained control. A mirror, Joseph exclaimed. And what a beautiful mirror. I bought it because you are so beautiful and because you reflect the possibility for mankind and Mark embarrassedly tried to explain his choice of the gift. Come, my friend, come. Tell me, why did you really buy this? Joseph teased. Because, said Mark, bursting into tears, when I see myself in a mirror, I see only defects. And I hope and pray that I become empty as a mirror so that whenever you look into it, I will reflect you. With this mirror, keep a little bit of me around you forever, Mark said, falling at Joseph's feet and kissing them. I will do better than that, Joseph said, picking him up and holding him. I will keep you in my heart forever, my Mark. What do you think? Leave me your thoughts below. I shan't prolong this video any longer. I'm going to leave it there on that beautiful note. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. Let me know what you thought. You might not be up for listening to me reading in my favourites videos, or you might like it. I don't know. Give this video a thumbs up if you did like it. Subscribe to me down there. You know that's coming up. You need to make sure that you're subscribed, especially if you're watching by Facebook or Instagram or wherever you guys come from. Also, I shall be leaving for you another video over there. Go and click on that if you'd like to watch some more Amina. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I look forward to catching you very soon in my next video. Take care, lovelies. Toodles. Put it in the bin. I know, we're going to put all the rubbish in the bin. I'm going to put you my in. little helper. Can you find everything that's purple and all the packaging and pop it in there for me? Thank you very much. <laughs>